Hello, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Hayden, and today I'm going to be speaking about functional neurology and functional medicine for the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. Uh, my quick uh, academic background here, I'll go over real fast. Uh, I have a fellow status with the American College of Spine Physicians. I'm certified in chiropractic spinal trauma. I'm board eligible as a diplomate in the American Chiropractic Neurology Board. I have done postdoctoral studies in neurology at Harvard Medical School and at the Cleveland Clinic School of Medicine. I have written a book called Neck Pain, Neck Pain, Why Your Neck Hurts and What You Can Do About It. And I'm also an author of a second uh, textbook. I'm a charter member of the International Association of Functional Neurology and Rehabilitation. And I studied under Datis Karazian with a postdoctoral work in functional blood chemistry, gluten and leaky gut autoimmune connection, the mastering brain chemistry, the mastering the thyroid, autoimmune signaling systems and blood glucose issues, and finally, the neuroendocrine and immune response to toxic exposure. Uh, peripheral neuropathy, we can go over it real quick. What is peripheral neuropathy and what causes it? What needs to be done to restore the peripheral nerves back to health? Uh, understand, first and foremost, it's extremely common. Uh, it's, this is a chronic disease that, take, that affects about 20 million Americans right now. Could be more, but as of now, that's what they estimate. Uh, basically, it's the electric wiring is breaking down inside your system. Uh, your hands and feet cannot communicate to the brain, and your brain cannot communicate back down to the hands and feet. Uh, what does this mean? Peripheral basically means that it goes further out from the body. As you can see, it covers the, uh, the legs and the arms. And neuro means nerves, pathy means abnormal, it's a bunch of Latin terms. Uh, there's 10 different signs of peripheral neuropathy. Uh, numbness, burning feet or hands, cramping, electric, sharp electric pain, pain when walking, difficulty sleeping from leg discomfort, uh, prickling and tingling feelings in the hands or the feet, loss of balance, also falling, uh, weakness, and swelling. You also have a hard time gripping things if it's in the hands. The symptoms depend on which type of nerves that are affected. There are three basic types. There's ones that carry sensations, we call that sensory, that's going up through the brain. And there's ones that control the muscles, that's from the brain going down towards back to the feet and to the hands. And then ones that carry information to the blood vessels, we call that the autonomic nervous system. Uh, sensation changes, uh, understand damage to the sensory uh, fibers result in changes in sensation. It's either burning sensation, nerve pain, which is a huge one, tingling or numbness, and an inability to uh, determine joint position, where your hand is at in, in position in space, and also causes balance problems. For many neuropathies, sensation changes uh, often begin in the feet and progress towards the center of the body with involvement of other areas as the condition progressively worsens. Uh, some basic uh, movement difficulties. Understand uh, damage to the motor fibers interferes with muscle control and can cause weakness, loss of muscle bulk, uh, loss of dexterity, Sometimes cramps are a sign of a motor nerve involvement also. Uh, all the chronic health conditions have some common threads, whether it be peripheral neuropathy, thyroid conditions, insulin resistance, that means prediabetes, uh, diabetes itself, fibromyalgia, vertigo, sciatica, chronic fatigue syndrome, hypertension, chronic neck pain, chronic back pain, stenosis, irritable bowel syndrome, insomnia, migraines and chronic headaches. All these have a common thread of metabolic imbalances and neurological imbalances, which include with the metabolic side is anemia, chronic inflammation, unstable blood sugar, adrenal gland dysfunction, hormonal imbalances, autoimmune attacks, hidden infections. They're in the gut, usually the viral, uh, food sensitivities, medication side effects, hypoxia, which means low oxygen, and the neurological imbalances means a decreased frequency of firing of the brain and the nervous system, which means it fatigues out. Your brain just needs to take a break. Understand, all chronic illnesses are a combination of neurologic and metabolic problems, requiring proper neurologic treatment and metabolic treatment. You didn't hear anything about structural. This is why most chiropractors can't fix this. 60% neurologic, about 40% metabolic problems. A real quick definition of metabolism, you eat food, it turns into energy. A uh, question I'll always like to ask is 30% of our energy goes into what system? Is it the endocrine, the digestive, the nervous system, the immune system, or cardiovascular system? 
It's actually the nervous system. The brain, spinal cord, and nerves are the ones that consume most of the energy in the body. We need proper metabolism, good energy hopefully, and it comes from well-functioning brain and nerves. The metabolic problems lead to peripheral neuropathy every single time. Leading causes of peripheral neuropathy. The number one leading cause of peripheral neuropathy is statin drugs, the cholesterol medications that you're taking. Number two are damaged uh, back, whether it be years or decades ago, and it all leads to scar tissue. This leads to arthritis, spinal stenosis. It leads to disc herniations. Herniations have now been renamed. They name them disc bulges. They call them protrusion, sequestrations, and they even call them extrusions. Just boils down to how far they're sticking out is why they came up with the new names. Uh, then, of course, number three is diabetes or insulin resistance, which means prediabetes. Then there's four is chronic inflammation. This is, includes food sensitivities, inflammatory foods, hidden infections in your gut, poor omega-3 to omega-6 essential fatty acid ratios. They're supposed to be one-to-one. -one. I said then there's high insulin levels. Then there's the hormone imbalances in women. And then, of course, number five is chemotherapy. Uh, statin drugs, number one, understand statin drugs inhibit the formation of cholesterol. Cholesterol makes up the sheath of the nerve. It wraps around it, basically. It also inhibits the formation of what we call CoQ10 enzyme, which is extremely valuable in your body. You need it. CoQ10 is necessary for nerve function completely. If you don't have it, it doesn't work. I uh, said so statin drugs are the leading cause of peripheral neuropathy in the United States right now. Uh, the statins increase, uh, they did a study in the Journal of Neurology, May of 2002, that showed that statin and slash cholesterol drugs increased the risk of peripheral neuropathy by 16 times. Actually, that's 1,600% increase of chance of it. That's why they're so dangerous. Now we need a, a good question is, is cholesterol really the enemy? I, says, I tell people, why has heart disease gone up dramatically since statins came into the market? Doesn't make sense, does it? Another one is, why do countries with chronically high cholesterol have lower heart disease than the United States? Starts making you wonder what, what's going on. And third one is, why do just as many people with low cholesterol die from heart attacks as people with high cholesterol? This is a really good question that no one can come up with a good answer for yet. My take home message from this is, understand cholesterol will never clog your arteries unless you are inflamed. If you're not inflamed, it fires right through. There's nothing for it to stick to. So you've got to get rid of the inflammation. So cholesterol really isn't the problem. Uh, you need cholesterol for proper nerve function and brain function. Otherwise, it just flat out doesn't work. And then you start having more and more problems, including peripheral neuropathy and many others. Uh, number two is a damaged lower back or neck, which can contribute to peripheral neuropathy. This includes stenosis, degenerative discs, herniated discs, also degenerative arthritis, all have one thing in common. This is the, they, all have, uh, they all get compressed. This is uh, basically the common traits among the lower back. This is your lower spine is compressed, placing pressure on the nerves that go to your feet all the way down, whether it be the femoral nerve, whether it be the sciatic nerve going all the way down to the foot, depending on where it lands. This is one of the treatments. Spinal decompression is one of the many weapons in our peripheral neuropathy program that actually works. This is number three is diabetes and uh, insulin resistance. Uh, nerves need a lot of energy to survive. Glucose is the nerve's source of energy. Without it, it can't work. I says, insulin is the hormone that puts the glucose into the nerve. If you don't have insulin, it floats around in the bloodstream and does not go into the body and go into the cells itself. Uh, when you're a diabetic or insulin resistant, whichever one it happens to be, pre-diabetic or fully diabetic, glucose cannot adequately get into the nerve and the nerves get fatigued very easily. It, this causes numbness, causes burning, pain, weakness, and tingling into the extremities. The other one is chronic inflammation. This is by far the biggie. I tell people inflammation basically means to ignite. You cannot build a house when it's on fire. It doesn't make sense trying to build a new bathroom when the other side of the house looks like this. I says you've got to take care of the inflammation first. You can't sit there and build something else up when something else is falling apart. Some common causes of inflammation that contribute to peripheral neuropathy. Basically, it's food sensitivities and inflammatory foods. You have to replace this with what we call a paleolithic diet. Uh, hidden gut infections is another problem. Poor omega-3, omega-6 essential fatty acid ratios. It's supposed to be one-to-one. -one. It's not supposed to be 50 to one, like the average American diet. Uh, high insulin levels cause this problem also. And of course, hormone imbalances. And you can tell the difference between good fats and bad fats. You can't eat junk food and expect to get good results. You have to actually eat good, healthy food.
Oops. And then uh, metabolic causes need to be addressed if you are to win the battle against peripheral neuropathy. In other words, you have to do comprehensive blood work. Unless you do the blood work, you don't have a clue what your diagnosis truly is. You can't guess. And have you ever been told that your uh, lab tests are normal? Lab regions are inaccurate. That's the problem. Bell curves are used. They used to be good. They've come up with better ones now. You need to use the new ones. They're called functional lab values. They're much more sensitive to reveal any problems. This is uh, why your test, you always feel sick. I tell people, this is why your lab tests are normal when you still feel sick. If you've ever seen a uh, thyroid person, they always say that labs come back normal, but they feel sick. This is why. You have high and you have low. I says, but yet the normal ranges here in between aren't really normal. You have to break them down tighter into a functional lab ranges. These, uh, the yellow areas are the, where the labs show that you are, shows you're fine in the lab work, but yet you still feel sick. You gotta make them tighter numbers. I says, and uh, this is a good example of how it works. I says, you got functional ranges, traditional ranges, the old numbers, and what the results actually mean. I said, when you have a glucose level, 85 to 100 is the functional numbers. That's what you're supposed to be using nowadays. The usual numbers in pretty much every single lab in the United States, they use 65 to 110. Over 100, you're pre-diabetic. If you're under that, you're hypoglycemic. I says, under 85. I says, TSH, same way. I said, that's thyroid stimulating hormone. How many people feel sick when they have a thyroid condition, but yet your lab values say you're normal. In reality, you actually have a problem. I says, hemoglobin's another big one. You have differences now from females and males. I says, they keep using the old numbers. If you come up, you come up as a 13 as an example, this shows you normal. In reality, you're anemic. So it boils down to which one you are, male or female. They actually have good numbers nowadays for it. And uh, when, you, uh, when you can't feel your feet, what happens to your brain? I says, uh, this is a study that came out of uh, Medline. I says, you cut your nerve, your brain actually does change. It causes loss of balance, memory loss, depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and insomnia. All these end up because the nerve got cut off. It's no longer working. I says, and this uh, is peripheral neuropathy, differential diagnosis and management. Here's a somatotopic map. You can tell by what portion of the body that's not working, what part of the brain is not working. Whether it be the face, whether it be the hand, the feet, the ear, the tongue, the intestines, wherever it may be. I says, you can actually sit there and figure it out which, I can figure out which lobe it is and I can tell you what part's not going to be working anymore and why it's not working. And it says, and what does the nerve need to revive and repair itself? Two things. Number one is fuel. You must have good glucose. It must be 85 to 100 or 99. I says, you have to have proper oxygen without a doubt. If you notice this food's here, this isn't McDonald's. I says, and you have to get rid of the inflammation. You have to have good neuro neurotransmitters. And number two, you have to have activation and a whole lot of it. That's what we specialize in this office. I says, I can do that here in this office very easily. Uh, what else can you, uh, do you need for uh, nerve activation and repair? Uh, low level laser. This is a class two laser, is also known as a cold laser. Actually works really, really well to get rid of the inflammation. And how does it revive it? A specific wavelength of light uh, longer than 800 nanometers has been proven to go to the nerve cells and stimulate energy production inside the neuron, allowing it to heal. This light also stimulates microcirculation and lymphatic drainage, which is a must. This light has to be coherent. This means that it can't scatter when it hits the tissue, because some of them do. They call adenine, anodyne therapy. I said, these, these don't work. <laughs> this is, this is not, not, it's what we call non-coherent light and is not nearly as effective as a class two laser. I understand that anodyne therapy is not laser therapy. A lot of people like to push that. In reality, it doesn't work at all. Uh, what else needs to be done? Uh, Hakomed uh, horizontal microcurrent therapy is a very good system. Uh, the low level laser. And number three is the vibration with oxygen therapy. Vibration stimulates the large sensory nerves, alpha uh, nerves, sensory nerves, in the feet and in the hand while uh, delivering fuel, oxygen with healing. Uh, another one is the rebuilder therapy. You actually, it's like a sock. It, says it stimulates the feet and opens up the large diameter uh, afferents in the uh, feet also, in the nerves. I says, you can, uh, it's done daily at home. It helps to reestablish the connections between the peripheral nerves. Uh, this is yours to keep after use of the conclusion of your treatment program in this clinic. 
The rest of the program includes essential fatty acid creams to be used at the clinic and at home. Uh, this strongly reduces local inflammation in the area, depending on where it's at, which foot it is, which hand it is. Other supplements will be given based on your blood test results. Another key point, if, uh, it takes many different things to correct peripheral neuropathy. Not just one thing will do it, ever. You must address both the underlying metabolic and neurologic problems to have success. This condition is progressive. I showed you what cutting a nerve can turn into. That's what it leads to because it is progressive. It can, go down to that, it can go down that road very easily. Our peripheral neuropathy program is one of the most comprehensive in the state of Illinois. In summary, uh, comprehensive blood work, uh, I use LabCorp, uh, looking at functional ranges to identify underlying metabolic conditions causing peripheral neuropathy, in other words, the inflammation, the blood sugar, and the cholesterol, they have to all be checked. Place on an anti-inflammatory diet to allow healing, uh, this is the peripheral neuropathy healing and nerve activation uh, via the spinal decompression therapy, if necessary, the HACOMED therapy, if necessary, the low-level laser, the uh, vibration therapy with oxygen, and of course the uh, EFAC, the essential fatty acid cream, and supplementations, whatever is needed. And how bad are you? The initial exam includes a complete neurological exam, including the peripheral neuropathy Toronto scoring test. This is by far the best one out there right now. The normal score is 74. What have you been tested at? And what's next? It's real easy. It's make an appointment. The first two visits include visit one. This is a complete neurological evaluation. I review all existing labs. Bring, please bring everything in. I don't care what it is, bring everything in. The more information I have, the better I can make a diagnosis. I don't like being in the dark. Okay, fill out the metabolic assessment form. I'll, you'll be given that here. And also, you must bring your spouse or another family member with you. I want to answer any and all questions. I don't like people being left in the dark and being scared. There's nothing to be scared of. Visit two, uh, I'll go over the case review with you. If I accept your case, uh, the overview of further complete testing to be done if something wasn't done already. A review of neurological findings from visit one. I says, then I overview the treatment plan of what I'm going to do to you. And then I'm going to review the financial obligation. I'm going to have it down to the exact dollar what you can, it's going to cost you. So there's nothing left in, on notes. No stone will be unturned on you at all. Okay? And please bring your spouse or another family member with you. I plan on answering any and all questions that day. What else do you need for your first visit? It's real easy. I ask people to bring shorts, sweatpants, or a t-shirt. It's much easier to get around. I can move things around real easy because I got to look at everything. I says, have all paperwork filled out completely. And I do mean all of it, please. Otherwise, I'll miss something. And then, of course, please bring your spouse or another family member. My offer, I only accept five new peripheral neuropathy patients per month. This is very, very time consuming on my end. There's a lot of work I have to do on my side. So that's why I do it that way. My first two visits cost $450. I says, if you make an appointment after attending this workshop or this video, I says, I'm offering you the first two visits for $125. My three rules that I live by and I make my patients live by every single time. I says, you must be willing to make serious life changes because there's things I'm probably going to have to change in your life to make sure this doesn't come back. I says, you'll have to take accountability for your health. Government's not going to take care of it. Insurance company's not going to take care of it. You have to take care of it. The reason you're in this position is because you did something to yourself. I have to fix it, so we've got to change your lifestyle around a little bit. I understand. And number three, insurance and Medicare only pay a small portion of this care. Uh, we've made our care plans affordable so that 96% of the people who uh, see this can get the care they need for as little as three to $500 per month, basically the size of, of, of a car. Six things I like to ask uh, on a scale of one to 10, how serious is your illness? Uh, where do you see yourself in three years? It's, understand this is progressive disease. It's going to go down that road. I says, how does it affect your relationships with your family, you know, with your spouse? How about your work? How is it working there? I says, your ability to even enjoy life on weekends. Uh, think of three things you could do if you didn't have peripheral neuropathy. Uh, and my big one, on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about eliminating your illness here? Number six, Due to time constraints, I can only accept those who are truly committed. Okay, if you're not truly committed, please don't sign up because this is actually serious. This takes a lot of time and energy. Again, I'd like to thank you for your time. And please, if you want to contact me, I have a website, drhayden.com. I have an email address I can get a hold of every week. It's askdrhayden at yahoo.com. It's A-S-K-D-R-H-A-Y-D-E-N at yahoo.com. And of course, my phone number is even the quickest of all, 309 344-4988.